covering the ground with a layer or sheet of organic matter or mulch. Absolutely any organic matter will do, such as hay, straw, leaves, needles, or of course, wood chips. Now, in order to explain why sheet mulching is such a great way to build rich, fertile soil, I think it makes sense for us to first talk about the exact polar opposite, deserts. Stay, stay with me on this. What causes desertification? Well, of course, there are a number of factors that can contribute to the creation of such dry and barren landscape. Drought and climate change come to mind pretty quickly. But one of the primary causes is actually man-made deforestation. You see, when we strip the land of its natural cover, we end up leaving it susceptible to erosion, evaporation, and eventually, wind. And while these natural forces may not sound like much, I think a quick look at our planet as a whole should serve as an adequate reminder of just how serious they can be. And that's why nature is so quick to fill any exposed topsoil with a plethora of weeds. Their roots soak up water to combat erosion. Their leaves shade the soil from the hot summer sun to prevent evaporation. And with all of these plants in place, the wind does little more than assist with the distribution of pollen and seeds. So when we see a typical tilled garden with large sections of exposed topsoil, we need to remember that what we're really seeing is the first stage of a future small desert. That's why weeds are such a problem for traditional gardens, because nature is desperately trying to maintain its fertility. But unfortunately, the well-intentioned gardener unknowingly fights it at every turn by plucking the weeds as quickly as they can sprout. So with all the exposed soil and constant weeding, you may be wondering why a traditional tilled garden doesn't immediately become a sandbox. Well, it's because the gardener constantly toils to add water, fertilizer, compost, and manure. They dig up the soil every spring and fall in order to aerate it and add amendments. They spend their blood, sweat, tears, and dollars every day just to maintain what nature does, well, naturally. Okay, so you don't want a garden filled with weeds. I get that. But luckily, living vegetation isn't the only way that nature prevents desertification. It also quite happily uses dead vegetation. For instance, take a look at our field. It's just coming out of winter dormancy, and what do you notice all around me? Dead grass, dead leaves, and dead wildflowers. It's nature's mulch! And if we take a closer look, we can see that there's all of these new plants naturally sprouting up through it just like over here in our garlic bed. But while a layer of mulch helps to prevent evaporation and the loss of nutrients, it also just happens to add more nutrients over time as it begins to compost. So if you only remember one thing about this video, let it be this. Mulch builds soil and exposed earth builds deserts.